Whoa, Matt, look at these tracks. What animal do you think left them? I bet it was a fox. I don't know, Corey. I bet it was a Bigfoot. <sighs> oh, hey guys, I didn't see you there. Corey and Matt here again, and today we're out here trying to figure out how do scientists study animals in the wild. You know, looking at what animals leave behind, like these tracks, is one way to tell what animals are using this area. But another way is with trail cameras. Ooh. Did somebody say trail cameras? Mary, perfect timing. Do you think you could tell us all a little bit more about trail cameras, what they are, what they do, how you use them? I sure can, come with me. Let's go. Okay, we have our game camera right here, and this helps us monitor wildlife without human interaction. Huh, so how does it work? Is it just taking pictures all the time? That's a lot of pictures to go through. Not quite, that would be a lot of pictures. It will only take pictures when it senses movement, like an animal walking in front of it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you decide to put it on this tree right here? Well, this area is a game trail. There's a lot of tracks and scat, and we want to know what animals are traveling. Huh. Okay, so we got the camera up, now what? Well, uh, now we wait to see what we caught on camera. Very cool. Well, while we wait, Matt, I do know a lot of other scientists. We could go talk with them and see how they study animals in the wild. Are you ready for an adventure? Always. Thanks, Mary. Bye, Bye guys. Go. <laughs> hey, Corey, where to first? Well, I know how much you love to fish, so I thought you might be interested in learning how scientists study the underwater world. Mm. You know, Corey, take it from somebody who fishes a lot. Those slippery fish can be hard to find. I can't wait to learn more. Let's go. Hey guys, how's it going? Hello. Good. So we're trying to figure out how scientists study animals, but we've got some questions about fish. Yeah. Like, we know that scientists tag fish, but looking at this stream, I mean, there's all sorts of places where a fish could hide, like under roots or rocks, and even an excellent fisherman like me couldn't possibly catch them all. Fish do a great job of hiding in a lot of little places. They can be under the banks, they can be behind rocks, but fortunately, we have a secret, a special tool. We have electricity. Cool. Uh -oh. Now, I'm not an expert, but isn't mixing electricity and water kind of dangerous? Should we get out? You're gonna be just fine because that's why we wear protective equipment like rubber waders, rubber boots, rubber gloves that protect us from the electricity in the water. Oh. We also have on our boat other protective means. We have buttons we can push on the front and back of the boat that help stop the power of electricity and also the electrical current only works when my probe is in the water, but when I lift it up, it breaks the circuit. And so no longer is there electricity flowing. Oh, that makes sense. And so what does the electricity do to the fish and what do you do once you catch them? It only temporarily stuns them. And so we catch them in our net and we'll put them in our live tank there. And then we take lengths on them and weights and we do counts and we see the different species in here and we find out how healthy this stream is. Wow, that's amazing. Well, it looks like you guys have a lot of work to do, so we'll let you get to it. Do you guys mind if we watch? That'd yeah. be great. That'd be awesome. Okay, amazing. <laughs> Okay, so what are, what are we looking at here? What do we catch? We've got some brown trout and some rainbow trout. White sucker and a dace. Long nosed Long dace. Long nosed dace. Okay. Oh, and a oh, little sculpin. And a sculpin. Another native fish. Nice. And these are all young of the year. Wow, that was amazing. What an interesting way to study animals that can be hard to find. You know, that reminds me, I know another scientist who studies hard to find animals in unexpected places, and he uses a pretty cool machine to do it. Let's go talk with him. All right. So Matt, this is Joe, chief pilot Hi, for Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. We're gonna learn about how this machine helps biologists study animals from the sky. So Joe, what do you do exactly? Well, mostly what I do is help biologists access areas that they can't get to on foot, we count 
Um, elk, deer, antelope, all sorts of different species. We go in, we do some telemetry work. I do a lot of wildlife research um, from the air, whatever, wherever we can get. When you're up there with the biologists, like what kind of animals specifically are you looking for? Well, specifically, we look for elk, deer, bighorn sheep, antelope, most of those herd animals, yeah. Wow, and sometimes we're even involved in capturing those animals for study out of the helicopter, right? Yep. That's gotta take a lot of skill. What kind of tools do you have to use? Well, they use a specialized net that, that captures them safely and we put collars on them. We actually, sometimes we dart them and then we put collars on the grizzly bears and we track them with telemetry. Wow, pretty amazing, right? Awesome, yeah, this is a real game changer for wildlife. It sure is, what do you guys think? You wanna go for a ride? Yes! Let's go! like the best day of my life. But Corey, I'm still wondering, like, what if they catch something out of a helicopter? Like, what do they do then? You know, I think I have a furry friend that can help us to answer that question. Let's go. Matt, this is my friend Lori, and she studies wild carnivores. <laughs> Corey, <laughs> this is a dog. I thought we were supposed to learn about how scientists study wildlife, not pets. Well, Matt, I didn't think it would be safe to bring a real wolf for this demonstration, so I brought my dog, York, and he's a carnivore, but he's a domestic carnivore. So, Lori, when you're studying things like wolves, how do you keep yourself and the animal safe? Well, to start with, we caught this wolf out of a helicopter with a dart that hit him right here. So we shoot the dart out of the helicopter, and then once he's down and kind of asleep, we do a few things first. First thing, we're gonna put this around his eyes, because it keeps him calm if he can't see what's going on. That's called a hood. The second thing we're gonna do because it's a wolf is we're gonna go ahead and muzzle those teeth because they're pretty big and I don't want him to bite me. The last thing we do, Corey, is we're gonna tie up his legs so that if he gets any wild ideas about going for a run, even though he's kind of sleepy, then we've got him captured and we can continue our work. Okay, so now that he's sedated and is safe to work with, what kind of information do you gather? Well, Matt, we're gonna gather a number of things about how big he is, how much he weighs, how healthy he is by looking at his teeth. But one of the more important things we're gonna do is put on this radio collar. So this radio collar has an antenna and it speaks to a receiver and it'll tell us where he's at at all times. So we know what kind of habitat he's in, whether he's alive or dead, because this radio collar will also tell us if he's dead. But we'll take some other things. We might take some blood from a vein in his neck here. We're gonna put on an ear tag with this little tool right here. And we might even measure him. So we'll weigh him from nose to the base of his tail to see how long he is. And then for a wolf, we'll probably also weigh him. So this guy's about 85 pounds, which is kind of the same size as a lot of wolves in Montana. Wow, I learned so much about how scientists study carnivores. Yeah, me too. Now, I know this wouldn't be a good idea if this was a wolf, but can we tell York what a good boy he is? You sure can. Oh, good boy. Such a good boy. Good what a good boy. <laughs> Wow, Corey, there are so many cool ways to study wildlife. I had no idea, like like using electricity to study fish. Yeah, or using a helicopter to survey populations of animals from the sky. Or using a GPS collar and taking measurements once you've captured an animal. Even using a trail camera to monitor animals. <gasps> Oh my gosh, that reminds me. I bet it's been long enough that Mary has caught some animals on her camera. Should we go check in? Yeah, let's go. Hey, Mary, there you are. Did you oh. have any luck with the camera? Oh, did I ever. You guys want to see what we caught on camera? Yes. Yeah. All right, so we have a fox in the snow. Oh. We have a coyote running through a field. Wow. 
a moose trotting along. So many bears. And even a couple of mountain lions. Ooh, and look here, this elk was cleaning our camera lens for us. How <laughs> nice of him. And this is one of our many challenges of game cams. This bear decided to mess with it and take it off the tree. Oh no. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. I mean, what a great tool for scientists to learn how many animals are using this area. Yeah, thank you so much for showing us what you caught on camera. See you later. Bye. Thanks, Mary. So, adoptive species friends, now it's your turn. We've only covered a few of the many ways that scientists study animals, and we may or may not have talked about how they study your adopted species. That's right. And so now, with the help of your teachers and your librarian, we want you to teach us about how scientists study your adopted species. And at the end of the year, you will participate in an art and writing contest, and you're gonna show us how your animal was caught on camera. Maybe the trail camera will catch your species looking for food, looking for shelter. Maybe it'll even show us scientists studying your animals. And the top drawings will be featured on the wall right here at Montana Wild. We can't wait to see what you come up with. All right, well that's it, goodbye. Hey Corey, I'm pretty sure I saw a big foot track. You gotta check this out, come on. Let's go see it.